This election does come down to between whether you're going to have Gordon Brown on the steps of number 10 for another five years, waving his hands on the day after polling day, and you can repeat that, another five years, or a fresh start with David Cameron and the Conservatives. Um, I see some nasty pieces of quite dishonest literature uh, floating about. Um, beyond that, I have heard of a couple of areas where there are one or two orange posters. We, we did get one complaint in uh, yesterday uh, from, from somebody who, from one of the villages complaining that a Conservative canvasser had accused the Liberal Democrat candidate of being a liar. <laughs> now, um, you know, I think they are being dishonest. They're being totally saying we're going to scrap the NHS. I mean, they are being, I, actually, I think they're doing themselves more harm because they, of the absurdity of their lies. Um, we're just going to knock on doors. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot of people will be out at work or whatever, but we will be um, uh, just trying to find out whether they want to ask me anything or whether they made their mind up. And once we've got a voting intention, we can then ring them up or go and see them nearer to polling day, remind them that the election's happening. This game is always better when you're in an area lots of houses. You can cover lots of... If they're very spread out, you yeah. walk miles and get yeah. very few done. A little bit of exercise. Yes. <laughs> I hope to lose about half a stone. At the end of the day. I just wondered whether you decided how you were going to vote yes in this election. Well, I'm not allowed to vote in here. Oh, you're, well, you're allowed to vote in European elections. You're not allowed to vote in... I am Italian. That's terrible. That's terribly bad and, luck. You've uh, probably lived here for years. It's a, it's a 40 odd years I'm in this country, but I still am not allowed to vote. 40. Okay. Now, wherever I go, whether friends or I go on holidays on a cruise, or you meet people, you say about things, they all say immigration. It's the first thing that comes up. And then you've got folks on the street. But the politicians seem to be either incapable well, we've got a very or, good... or it's not that simple, well, I don't know. No, but, we've got a very good, but, policy, straightforward uh, policy on immigration. I mean, if, if people said I'm banning immigration, you'd get in straight away. I am a moderate politician. Yes. And I, I will only talk about issues like immigration in a sensitive, thoughtful way. What, 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 what happens is, is, what's happened in the past is that Politicians like me have been, you know, threatened by others to say, you know, if you even talk about immigration, you're playing the race card or something like that. You know, that is not what we're about. This is about, this is about the population of this country. It's a very crowded island. This is, there's nothing to do with race issues here at all. We are sick of politicians, I'm afraid, <laughs> like a lot of people. We are sick of the expenses scandal and we've now got the bar bills. Perfect cases. Well, firstly, I hope you, I hope you may have read that I... Uh, I know you. Yes. I know you're squeaky clean and I'm yeah. extremely pleased about yes. it. And uh, I, I know from our area we were very lucky. One of my great heroes was a man called Sir Ernie Harrison, yeah. who was the founder of Vodafone, or one of the founders. Right. And uh, he once said to me, when he, I said, I met him and I was, he said, I, I was standing for Parliament. Mm -hmm. And he was a little man with very piercing eyes. And he looked at me and he said, what's your passion? Oh, Gave him some sort of stupid reply. And he said, no, I, people come and work for my company. I want them to be passionate about what they do. And I want them to have passions in their life, you know, that they, they're passionate about hobbies as well as, you know, as well as their work. Yes. Yeah. And I, I thought to it afterwards, I thought, you know, it's quite right that, you know, yeah. whether you're going to be a journalist or a politician or an accountant or an artist, whatever, mm. you've got to have a passion for what, what you do. Sorry, Mr. Irby. Three or four thousand pounds a year for them to split up and live apart. Crazy. You know, and people criticise us for the, the marriage 
and recognising marriage, marriage. Tax system. Instead of but we have a system which encourages people to buy thousands of pounds a year. Yeah. Yeah. If you yeah. can work and turn down work, you will There's not be able to get your benefits. My fundamental belief that there is such a thing as society, it's just not the same thing as the state. So yes, this is a modern, progressive, conservative manifesto. And you know the best thing about all this? Fewer people making decisions on your behalf, thinking of ways to spend your money, means there's more opportunity to redistribute power away from the centre to local people. So what did you think about Mr Cameron's manifesto? Uh, it's what I've been waiting 15 years for my party leader to say. The good thing is that people are so disappointed with politicians, we come in as human beings. Obama's problem is he came in as a saint and people have discovered that he's a human being. And you know, I, I still rate the man, but I didn't just, you know, I, if we win this election I want people to come in understanding that massive problems, but we, we, we can solve them. Of your support? I might not even vote for anybody actually. Why is that? I think it's a waste of time. I, 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 this country's just absolutely gone apart. And I, I don't think whoever gets in going to make it any better. Myself. So the next five years, if something, if you've got a Prime Minister or government up there who's doing things you don't want and you didn't take part in it, you can't really complain about it, can you? Uh, um, your great grandmother was chaining herself to the railings of Buckingham Palace for you to vote. Well, yeah, I expect she would. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, you'll, yeah, you'll get my support. Of course, of course you will. <laughs> I didn't take you, long. <laughs> yeah. Well, I bet you we put a poster this up there, crazy. and then the Liberals will go along there, and the, ours will come down, and the Liberals will go up, yeah. we go along, and then the other one comes up. <laughs> well, I just had a lightning conversion. <laughs> In the space of about 12 seconds, she went from, oh, you're all a bunch of crooks, to... Yes, I'll vote for you, and you can put a poster up. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is miraculous! Ninety-nine percent of people in West Berkshire are polite, even when they don't support you. In fact, sometimes they're so polite they won't tell you that they're not going to vote for you, and they say things like, oh, <laughs> "We'll be there." Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean they're going to vote for you. No. Um, and uh, they what they're really saying, they don't want to hurt my feelings by telling me that they're not going to vote Aww. for you, which is so nice. <laughs> and just occasionally you get somebody who's rude, mm. but people are often put off coming canvassing because they think everyone's going to be rude. Mm. But I mean, in this area, it, it just doesn't happen, or doesn't happen very often. A lot of, a lot of those training over here, because they come from RAF Odium, um, and they're training for Afghanistan. Parliament will be totally different. Over half the MPs will be new. Lots of younger people. It's people from different ethnic backgrounds, and it'll just be better and I'm really looking forward to that if I get back in but today was just a day when we were just knocking on doors <laughs> <laughs> 